Hi, I'm Cecilia Knapp and I wrote Losing the Night. Come and see it 18th to 20th of March as part of Raining Women. Okay. Um, so what's the show about? The show is about, um, whenever people ask this, I always say that the show is about friendship predominantly um, because the two central characters are, um, they've had a long, long friendship since childhood but they've lost one of their friends um, and they haven't seen each other since it happened. Um, and I think the reason that they've not seen each other is because for a lot of, I think, young people and people in general, really, grief becomes this very kind of alienating, awkward experience. Um, and so they've been avoiding each other and uh, they both happen to um, get a job in the same pub. And so they're forced to talk about it for the first time since they lost their mate. And um, the whole play just happens in real time in the pub as they're chatting about it. And they both go on a bit of a journey, really. And they both have completely different attitudes to what happened. Um, so, yeah, it's about their friendship and how their friendship helps them to navigate what's happened, basically. I guess, I hope audiences will feel like it's something that they can relate to. Um, I feel like we're all going to experience, if we've not already, we're all going to experience grief and loss and the complicated feelings that come with that at some point in our lives. And I think that those experiences should be put on stage because they help people to empathize with those things and they help people feel less alone. Like I've been through several bereavements in my life and I always struggled to find um, stories on stage or even in film and stuff that kind of represented my experience and spoke to me and made me feel like it was okay to be feeling the complicated things that I was feeling. Um, so when I wrote this play, I wanted to just be really honest and candid about the myriad of feelings that you experience when you've lost someone or someone, someone's died. Because it's not always simple and straightforward. And um, these two characters discover that and learn to voice that. Um, I hope people will come and have a laugh as well, because at the end of the day, these are two young people in a pub mucking about and they're and there is humour within grief and there is silliness. Um, and so I wanted to make that a part of the play as well. Um, and I wanted to give the characters a space and a platform to say the things that are maybe more difficult to say. Um, so they've lost their friend because he struggled with his mental health. And I also want the play to kind of talk about that and to talk about the fact that young people are experiencing the mental health crisis in the UK on the front line and they're losing people because of it. And I wanted to highlight that, but also talk about what happens to the people that are left behind and the consequences of there not being enough support and provision for people that are struggling with their mental health. So there's a lot in the play. Um, I hope it's kind of like a real honest look at all of those things whilst also being funny and sweet and tender and um and hopefully we'll we'll carry that message whilst also being fun and entertaining as well if you like something you might like my work oh my god that's such a difficult question i have a i have a background as a poet so um although the piece is um you know very dialogue heavy because it's basically two pals talking there are some moments that are a bit more poetic. I, I really enjoyed writing longer monologues that are a bit more stylized for the characters where they, they can kind of go inside themselves um, and I guess find the kind of the, the poetic language to talk about their experiences. Like for me, I always think that poetry has always been for me a way to find a different language to talk about things that are huge and to get to them in like a in a different way. Um, so there is some poetry 
kind of poetry in there. So if you like things that are a bit more poetic and a bit more stylized, then there are certain parts of the play that you might like. Um, I think if you, yeah, if you like <laughs> pubs and jokes about pubs and people messing about in a pub, then you'll like the play, I hope. Um, there's music and kind of um, some nods to like some influential pieces of music that I loved when I was growing up. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is that such a hard question? I think it's just, yeah, I think it, it sort of does what it says on the tin, basically. It's like friends talking and it, I wanted it to feel like you were watching them through, like you had a special ticket into their lives and into their conversation. I wanted it to feel that real in parts um, and feel that honest in parts, I guess. Yeah, I think there's something really special about experiencing something as a community that's happening together in that moment, um, which is why I always really loved going to poetry things, because it would just be someone telling a story and sharing that part of themselves to a room full of people that were there and responding to it. And it, so in that way, it felt like a kind of exchange. And um, yeah, I think it's powerful to put real stories of grief and loss on stage and explore them in that way. Um, I think it's giving a voice to the, to the subject and it's also allowing people to come and experience that collectively. Um, and I think there's a real appetite for it um, because so much of the time our feelings, the genuine things that we feel are seen as either shameful or awkward or taboo. And there's something about the boldness of just being like, no, I'm gonna tell a story about someone that died and the consequences of it and the story and the journey that happened beyond that. Because that happens, I'm gonna tell that and I'm gonna say the things that you're not really supposed to say about grief and loss. And I'm gonna put it on stage and I'm gonna invite you know, a room full of people to see it. That feels like a statement and it feels like a kind of a claiming of space for something that needs to be talked about. Um, so I think that can create a really amazing energy and um, it can open up a lot of conversations. And, and not only is it kind of, not only was it kind of cathartic for me to write and figure out, but also anyone watching can experience the feeling of being seen, like my, you know, my grief is important, my experience is important, I feel seen by this piece of theatre because it's named the things that I've experienced. But also for people that haven't experienced it and they just want to come and, and, and watch it and feel like a connection and, and, and understand humans a bit more, like putting stories on stage is the greatest breeder of empathy. Um, we, we watch things to empathise with them. Um, so I think, yeah, it's powerful. My favourite moment of the piece. Oh, there's a really gorgeous bit where um, they find an old CD and they put it on and uh, a song comes on that reminds them of Dylan, who, they, who they've lost. And they just have to stop and dance with each other as though in, in tribute to um, to their friend, basically. Um, I won't tell you what the song is because you have to come and see it <laughs> for you to know. What I want audiences to take away is um, a few things, really. The power of friendship, and I think that it's, it's an important friendship because there's a male character and a female character, but they're not romantically involved at all. They're just really good friends um, that have grown up together and their friendship plays out quite, um, their friendship goes on quite a journey throughout the play. So I wanna talk about friendship. I wanna talk about loss and how we should not feel ashamed to talk about how we truly feel when it comes to 
grief and loss um, and how grief and loss is not a linear journey. It's complicated, it's, it's messy, um, it changes and it's not, there's no one easy fix. Um, I want to talk a lot about mental health and about um, the fact that in this country there's a system that doesn't support people that are suffering adequately and that coupled with the fact that mental health is a difficult thing to talk about um, can have some really damaging effects I guess so yeah I think I think those things all fall under the umbrella of talking and sharing stories and being true um, to how you feel so I guess that's the kind of founding theme in the piece we're not given the language to talk about how we feel growing up, I think, a lot of the time. And um, I think seeing it, seeing stories where people go on that journey and discover how to say how they feel and, uh, and try and kind of figure things out is, is a really empowering, can be a really empowering thing for people. It can give you the language that you need, I think, in some, in some sense or just the permission to feel a certain way, you know. I've gone to see things in the past where I've, I've felt, oh my God, I felt like that too. I felt like this person in this play or in this film or in this poem or whatever. And it's just that kind of seeing someone else going through it, even if it's on stage or in a piece of art or whatever, gives you the permission to feel it yourself and to not feel weird or strange for feeling it, you know, and I, and I want, I want anyone that's ever been through a complicated type of loss, or any loss really, to, to see themselves reflected in this show. Come and see Losing the Night, Wednesday the 18th to Friday the 20th of March, as part of Reigning Women.